In class, you're gonna hear about a myocardial infarction. That is the medical term for a heart attack. Let's break it down. So myo is muscle. Cardio, that's cardiac. We're talking about the heart. Infarction means death. If you ever see the word infarction, something's dying. We gotta understand what that is. In this case, heart muscle is dying. That's a heart attack. Now, what occurs? The coronary arteries are responsible for supplying blood to the heart's muscle and tissues. This keeps the heart strong and pumping, right? Now, there's two things that can happen. One, we have a blockage, like a clot, in one of the coronary arteries. That causes a heart attack. The second thing that can happen is what we call a severe vasoconstriction, right? Vaso, I'm talking about the vasculature constriction, I'm gonna clamp down, right? Either way, I have a blockage and I've stopped blood from flowing in that coronary artery. That's how a heart attack happens. I'm gonna go over a lot of terms here. Let's get into it. Let's better understand this. So there's two disorders we have to know about and why this occurs. Atherosclerosis. What this is, is cholesterol deposits. Essentially, it's how our clot and plaque will form causing that blockage. That is basically the fat that is accumulating and plaque that's accumulating causing that blockage. That is atherosclerosis. That's gonna happen over time. Now, arteriosclerosis, what this is, is a thickening and really making the arteries thick and really not as elastic. So they become stiff and really inefficient at their job. These two right here are start to be one of the main primary risk factors of having a heart attack. So we wanna avoid this. Let's go a little deeper on this. Acute coronary syndrome, acute myocardial infarction. You're gonna hear these terms, let's understand them. So ACS, acute coronary syndrome, what that means. Something is happening to your coronary artery right now. How bad is it? That's what we're gonna learn about. But there is ischemia going on right at this time. Are we having a full-blown heart attack? Or are we just having angina? We're gonna try to determine that. But there is an event going on. That is acute coronary syndrome. It's a group of symptoms that cause ischemia. Now next here is our AMI. AMI is acute myocardial infarction. Well, that means you're having a heart attack right now. So the heart muscle is dying right now. So remember this folks, ischemia, right? Is kind of like the artery is choking, if you will. Where there's a lack of oxygen, right? If we have injury, if we have death, we have infarction, that is there are cells dying, right? So first we, we may get ischemia, but then as it gets worse, injury into infarction, right? That's, we're talking about the heart muscle, talking about the heart tissues, right? Now, a few more key terms that are always thrown around, you gotta understand. Stable versus unstable angina. So okay, first off, what is angina? Angina is, depending if it's stable or unstable, okay? If, let's say we have somebody with angina, in principle what it is, it is our classic chest pain, shortness of breath, symptoms. Whether someone's exercising, whether they're walking around, we've heard these stories. The difference between stable and unstable is, okay, I have chest pain. Let's say I go sit down. Let's say I take a nitroglycerin uh, tablet or, or spray, right? And then, oh, okay, I feel better. Or maybe I sit down, I stop exercising, and I feel better. That was a stable angina. It was just a temporary narrowing of the artery. We talked about why this occurs. But then it goes back to normal. Scary, right? That's stable angina. Unstable angina, what that is, it persists. Let's say that patient was out mowing the lawn. They come back inside. They take a rest. They take some the medication like nitroglycerin. It's been 15 minutes and they still got pain. 
that is an unstable angina. Now the question is, when we do an EKG, when the patient gets blood work done, there's gonna be a scale. Do they have unstable angina or are they having a heart attack or something in between, right? And that's why we're gonna do an EKG and get blood work, right? Now the last piece I talked about earlier from this slide here is something called Prinz metalangina. Some people call it a vasospasm angina or vasospasm occlusion. What that is, it's not a blockage. It's the coronary artery clamping down. Usually this is temporary, but until it persists, we do not have any oxygen or blood going to that coronary artery. So that's something to watch out for. And obviously it's gonna have the same symptoms as a blockage. There it is. So how do we classify different types of heart attacks? Well, the classification is based upon how we found out about that heart attack. So let me explain. First, we have a STEMI. A STEMI is an ST elevation MI. You're a paramedic in the ambulance, you do an EKG, the EKG shows a heart attack. That patient gets emergently transported to hospital. They go up to a place called the cardiac catheterization lab, AKA the cath lab, and they get a stent placed. That is a clear cut STEMI. The EKG shows the heart attack. Now, what about an end STEMI? Well, the only thing we change if we put an N in front of it, and the N stands for non ST elevation MI. Well, the ST elevation is found on the EKG. So an NSTEMI means you're a paramedic in the ambulance, your patient has those same symptoms, but you do an EKG, you don't see a heart attack. This is where there can be delays in care because the only way to uncover NSTEMI is blood work. So blood work shows the MI. When and how is the blood work drawn in the emergency department? So it is said roughly about 20 to 30% of NSA patients needed to go right to the cath lab, but if we're doing STEMI versus NSTEMI criteria, they're sitting down in the ER. Maybe they're getting care, that's great, but they need to go to get an emergent catheterization. This is why there's a new term called OMI. So it's occlusive myocardial infarction. I think about it as kind of in the middle ground between STEMI and NSTEMI, right? The whole goal of this OMI is Okay, you're a paramedic in the ambulance. The EKG is concerning enough between the patient's symptoms, the patient vitals, the patient history, the EKG. It's concerning enough where it's not showing a full-blown full blown heart attack, but it's concerning enough for you to light the sirens to the hospital, and it's concerning enough to get that patient into the cath lab emergently, right? So I wrote here, the EKG is concerning enough to head to the cath lab emergently, right? And what this does is, now your end stomach patient doesn't get burned sitting down in the ER, right? This is the idea behind OMI. How do you learn anything in medicine? It's called my one, two, three, four method. One is, what is it? Two, what are the risk factors? Three, what are the signs and symptoms? And four, how do we treat it? So number one, explain to me simply a heart attack, what it is. The coronary artery is either being blocked or it's under severe spasm, the clamp down. One of those two. That's what's occurring, which leads to the heart muscle tissue dying. Number two, what are the risk factors? And a monitor for you, I'll put on the screen right here, is SAD, S A D, C H F. So here it is smoking, advanced age, diabetes high cholesterol, high blood pressure, and family history of cardiac disease or having a heart attack very young, right? Number three, what are the exact signs and symptoms of a heart attack? Well, you may have heard about pressure, squeezing, crushing, elephant on my chest, pain that goes down the left arm, up into the jaw, onto my chest. Yes, that's correct. But what about some of the sneaky ones? Well, there's shores of breath. There's nausea vomiting. There's chest with back pain. There's, oh, I'm nauseous and my back really hurts. There's, I'm so weak and tired I can't walk. I walk around, I'm short of breath. I'm so weak I can't get out of bed this morning, right? 
These are some of the things we want to look for. Another one sneaky is when someone passes out. In medicine, that's called a syncope. Someone faints, right? Now, the last one here is signs of heart failure. So if you don't know what that is, basically we have fluid in the bottom of our lungs or we have fluid edema in our legs. So we want to look out for those heart failure signs as well. That's going to be with this. Now, the final piece, how do we treat it? Number four, aspirin, nitroglycerin, oxygen, pain medications, get as many IVs as you can, performing an EKG and 12 with EKG, cardiac monitoring, rapid transport to the hospital, and get that patient to the cardiac cath lab, and you're going to radio in as soon as you suspect a heart attack. You're going to radio in, and when you go ahead and radio in, they're going to say, open up the cath lab. And there it is. Now, a lot of you asked in the comments about how to prepare for school, how to get through school, and how to pass an REMT. The first link in the description is a study tool that I give to all my students to accomplish all of that. It's called the Video Vault. Inside the Video Vault is over 480 videos of content, audio files, worksheets, practice quizzes, our community group. What I do in the video vault is take all the concepts you need to know to pass school at NREMT, and I break them down simply for you. So that way you just follow along with the videos, you follow the study plan, and you pass. I give my students lifetime access in the first link in the description, and I'll see you on the inside.